Hi guys, I'm Sandra and today we will explain how to install and set up a BL Touch sensor on the Creality Ender 3 Max in three easy steps. So, do you want to know more? Then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, as you know, the Creality Ender 3 Max is equipped with a 310 by 320 mm glass bed from stock and which is considered to be pretty flat. But in case your glass is not that flat or you just want to install one anyway, it's very easy and here's how you can do it. First, we need to get a way to secure the BL Touch sensor. The X axis carriage already has a couple of threaded holes dedicated for a leveling sensor so we can use those to secure the mount. On Thingiverse, there are several mount options for BL Touch installation on this printer. For this tutorial, we will use this one, but you can choose any one of them. To secure the sensor to the mount, you will need four M3 by 10 screws and a couple of M3 lock nuts. So, start by placing the sensor like this with the connector aligned with the cable alignment pins and secure it with the two screws and lock nuts. Confirm that the connector from the sensor is aligned with the cable alignment pins. Next, install the sensor and mount with the remaining screws on the X-axis carriage. And then, connect the cable to the sensor and pass it through the alignment pins. Next, get some zip ties and secure the BL Touch cable together with the print head cables. If you haven't turned off the printer at this point, go ahead and turn it off, because we will need to open the panel and connect the sensor to the board. There are four screws that we need to remove to open the cover panel. One is at the top under the bed and the other three are located at the bottom. Carefully turn the printer on its side and if you have something soft like a piece of foam, use it to unload some of the weight from the Z carriage. Locate the three screws and carefully remove the cover. The stock board is the Creality 4.2.2 and it's equipped with a dedicated connector for the leveling sensor. The connectors from the BL Touch extension cable will not fit correctly, so we recommend to get a 5-pin JST connector and pins and crimp this one instead using this color sequence. If you have a different BL Touch sensor or with different wiring colors, you need to match according to the pins. To make things easier, we will turn the image upside down for you to read the PCB markings correctly. On the board connector you have the ground for the sensor, 5 volts for the sensor and signal for the probe. Next is the ground for the trigger and the last one is the signal for the trigger. 
Make sure you check your sensor's pin out and connect the wires to the right pins. As for the Z end stop cable, you can just remove it. If you can't get a JST connector, there's a workaround which is to carefully pull the plastic piece of the connector out and connect the BL touch directly on the pins. If you do this, be very careful not to damage the pins or the solder joints. There's also an alternative way to connect the sensor and it's by using the Z and stop connector instead. For that, you need to connect the three sensor wires on the five pin connector and the two trigger wires on the Z and stop two pin connector. Some users reported random failures while sensing the bed when the sensor is connected to the dedicated BL touch connector. So, if you have this issue, connect this way instead. One important note is that these two different ways to connect the sensor will require different firmware setups. Next, pass the sensor cable through the metal profile cutout. If you find a way to protect the cable to avoid rubbing against the metal profile, even better. Close the cover panel and from the top side arrange and secure the cables. Make sure the wires go through the side and that they will not get caught by the bed when it's moving back and forth. Move all the axes all the way to make sure that the sensory wires move freely and does not get caught by any moving part. Also move the Z all the way up to make sure you have enough cable. If not, you will need to buy or make an extension cable. As for the Z end stop, you can disconnect it and remove it. With everything connected, Turn the power on and check if the sensor initializes correctly. For the BL touch to work, we will need to modify the printer's firmware. So get a blank memory card and insert it in your computer. Make sure it's formatted as FAT32. There are several websites where you can get the new firmware from. From this website, you have a firmware version for the boards 4.2.2 and 4.2.7. If you have the stock 4.2.2 board, this is the one you need. But remember, these versions will only work with the BL Touch connected directly to the dedicated BL Touch connector. For all of these, the files are already compiled, so you don't have to do anything else. Inside the zip file, you can find the firmware for BL Touch. Okay. Copy the file to the memory card and then insert the memory card in the printer and turn the printer on. For the firmware update to work, you cannot use the same name twice for the bin file, otherwise the printer will not load the new file. With the firmware correctly uploaded, you should now have the BL Touch menus and options. All these options that we have just shown will only work if the BL Touch is connected to the dedicated BL Touch connector on the board, which means that if you want to use the Z and stop connector instead, or want to make your own modifications to the firmware, you will need to download it from Marlin website instead. If you don't want to go through the compiling procedure, you can skip the following explanation and download our already compiled firmware for the BL Touch connected to the Z and Stop connector on our Patreon page. So, back to Marlon. You need to download the raw firmware and extract the files. You also need the config files for the Creality Ender 3 Macs. So you need to download these as well. Once both downloads are complete, extract their contents and delete the zip files. Now, enter the config files folder and look for the Creality Ender 3 Max files. Copy all of them and then go back and place them inside the Marlin folder. If it asks to replace or skip, choose Replace. Next, use Visual Studio Code with Platform I.O. to enable the BL Touch and compile the firmware. For the BL Touch to work, you need to enable the following lines. 
The first one indicates that we are using the probe connected to the Z and stop pins. Make sure you have this line enabled just like this. But if you prefer to connect all the pins to the dedicated BL Touch connector on the board, then disable the line by adding the two slashes at the beginning. Next is the line to use the probe for homing the Z. Enable it by removing the two slash characters at the beginning of the line. Scroll down a little bit more and enable the BL Touch line. Next is to define the probe offset. You can check the X and Y offset in the author's information on Thingiverse. And that's what we will use. Next, we need to enable the type of leveling. We will use the bilinear leveling, so we need to enable this one. We will also want to restore the leveling after the G28 command, so we need to enable this one as well. Last but not least is the Z safe homing. This will make the print head move to the center when homing the Z axis. OK, the firmware is ready to be compiled. Just make sure you have the correct environment typed in and then press the small check at the bottom to compile. If everything works OK, you should see the success in green letters and the compiled firmware can be found inside these folders. OK, so here you have the file, which is this one with the bin extension. Then copy the file to the root of the memory card, put the card in the printer's memory card slot and turn the printer on. The printer will then automatically update the firmware. From now, you will have access to extra menus for the BL Touch. One of them will allow you to test the sensor. So, go to BL Touch and click on Deploy. This will make the sensor spin extend. Next, click on Stow to retract the sensor spin. There are a few other tests we can do to check that everything is working correctly before calibrating. Move the Z up until it's halfway and then run the auto home. The printer will home the X and Y axis and then will move the BL touch sensor to the center of the bed and the Z will start to go down. At that point, use a flat object and trigger the sensor. This is to test if everything is working OK and if it's being triggered correctly. If the probe fails to sense the object and continues to go down, turn the printer off immediately. Now it's safe to run the leveling sequence. While it's doing the leveling, keep your finger close to the off switch in case something goes wrong. As we mentioned before, some users experience random failures when connecting the BL Touch in the dedicated BL Touch connector on this board. If you notice that too, just change the trigger wires to the Z and stop connector. OK, since the probe is at a different height when compared with the nozzle, we will need to type in this difference. Even if you have installed the same sensor and the same mount, you still need to do this calibration. And it's done here, in the Z offset menu. Make sure your Z offset value is zero. And start by pressing Auto Home. The BL Touch will sense the bed at the center and then stop at a certain height. From the BL Touch mount information on Thingiverse, the author says the Z offset might be around minus 2.75 millimeters. So we go to the Z offset menu and change the value. But we will have to go past the minus 2.75, so we will enter minus 3 millimeters. OK, now do auto home again. Once done, move the Z axis down 1 millimeter at a time. Stop when the nozzle is close to the surface and change the stepping to 0.1 mm. Then get a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper and lower the value step by step until the nozzle touches the paper. At that time, stop and read the value on the screen. 
In our case, the nozzle was touching the paper at 0.5. This is the value we need to take from the Z offset. So go back and instead of minus 3.0, change to minus 2.5. It's a good practice to store the settings, so go ahead and do it. And then repeat the process. Run the auto home and then move the Z down slowly. If you get the nozzle touching the paper and at the same time you have zero height at the display, the Z offset is calibrated. But wait, there's one more test you need to run. Go to your slicer and load an STL file. Any STL will work because it will be used just to test and fine tune the Z offset. Then go to your slicer settings, enable the brim and increase the number of brim lines. This is just to give you more time to adjust the first layer. You can revert to your old settings after the calibration is done. Next is the start G-code. After the G28 command, create a new line and include the command M420 space S. This will enable the bed leveling and use the saved mesh. An alternative is to use the G29 command instead. This will run the leveling sequence and probe the bed every time before each print. Unlike the brim settings that you can revert after the calibration, the command in the start G-code must always be there as long as you have the leveling sensor installed and running. OK, you can then start the sprint. While printing the brim lines, press the knob and select Tune and then Baby Steps. This will allow you to fine-tune the first layer in very small steps so you can get the best result. OK, it's done. You can then click on Store Settings to save the data. And that's it you guys. We hope you liked the video and if yes, please don't forget to give it a like. We will see you guys next time. Bye!